Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about management of a company, which is topic two in business law two or company law. A company is a legal body where one or more persons form a business that becomes a distinct legal entity or that, that becomes separate from those who formed it. And that's what we call a company. And the law relating to management of a company deals with the law governing the operation of the board of directors, the members of the company, the managing directors, the auditors, accountants, and any other office of the company. And this is found in Part 5 of the Companies Act 2012. Let's look at membership of a company. Section 47 of the Companies Act defines a member of a company as in subscriber to the memorandum of association of the company. Yeah, a member is also a person who becomes a member and whose name is entered in the register of members of the company, e.g. where a person buys shares in the company and is registered as a member of the company. The members of the company are therefore the shareholders of the company. Let's look at the officers of a company. Company law generally empowers the directors to manage the company's business, and that is under Section 52. However, the ultimate control of the company is with the shareholders, who are the real owners of the company. Yeah, and the officers of the company are two, and that is shareholders, and then the board of directors. We are going to look at each one of them in details. Let's start with shareholders. Shareholders are the members in the company, and they are the real owners of the company. They manage the company through company meetings. Let's look at company meetings for members. We say shareholders are the members of the company and they manage the company through company meetings. There are four types of meetings through which the shareholders manage the company. And the first one is statutory meetings. Statutory meetings, these are provided under section 137 of the Companies Act, which requires for which, which requires every public company to hold such type of a meeting within a period of not less than one month and no more than three months from the date of commencement of business. Statutory meetings are mandatory for all public companies. They are held once in the company's lifetime and they must be held within the first to the third month from the date of commencement of business. And a statutory report must be sent to all the members of the company 14 days before the meeting is held. A statutory report that is sent basically contains details on the number of shares that are allotted to the shareholders. It has information on the cash contribution of each shareholder, the details of directors, managers, auditors, and the secretary of the company, and then the contract descriptions of the different officers of the company. And the use of the statutory meeting is to give shareholders an update of the progress of the company by the promoters and the directors. And the second meeting is the annual general meeting, which is known as AGM. It's required for all types of companies, even the public companies. And this is under Section 138 of the Companies Act. The annual general meeting must be convened within a notes of not less than 21 days. And the notes must specify that the meeting is an annual general meeting. Yeah, not more than 15 months should elapse between one annual general meeting to the next. And within 18 months after incorporation, the company must hold an annual general meeting and thereafter, the annual general meeting must be held every year. The annual general meeting is usually convened by the directors, but if directors do not call it, the registrar may, on application of a member, direct the convening of one. 
the purpose of the annual general meeting is to ensure that at least the members meet the directors and have an opportunity to question the directors about different things. Yeah, if the company fails to convene the annual general meeting, there are two consequences. And the first one is the rejection from a convened the meeting. Then the second consequence is every director who is in default of convening that meeting as well as the company itself are liable to a default fine of 25 current points. Yeah, and that was all about the annual general meeting. Another meeting we have is the Extraordinary General Meeting, which is EOGM, where the summoning issues that may not hold to the next annual general meeting, then an Extraordinary General Meeting is held, and this is under Section 139 of the Companies Act. The extra Ordinary general meeting is held when shareholders of at least 10% of the paid-up share capital request for holding of the meeting. And for companies without share capital, they must hold at least one-tenth of the voting rights of all the members. The requisitions who want to hold the extraordinary general meeting must state the objects of the meeting and deposit them at the company's registered office. If the shareholders want to convene the extraordinary general meeting and the directors necessary to form the quorum are not in Uganda, then any two directors or any two members may convene the meeting. The extraordinary general meeting must be held within 21 days of receipt of the requisition. And if the directors fail to convene the meeting, then 50% of the requisitions can go ahead to convene that meeting, provided that they do, they do it within three months after the expiration of the 21 days. Yeah, and that was all about the extraordinary general meeting. Then we are going to look at the last type of meetings. Lastly, let's look at the general meeting convened under court orders. This type of meeting occurs where for any reason it's impractical to call a meeting of a company in the manner prescribed above where it's impractical to call the statutory meeting, the annual general meeting or the extraordinary general meeting, then the general meeting can be convened under court order. So if it's impractical to call a meeting caught on its own motion or on request of the shareholder or any director may order a meeting to be held in the manner in which the court thinks fit and this is under section 142 of the Companies Act. Let's look at how shareholders can show that it's impractical to convene such a meeting. Yeah, and this can be by showing that the directors are the only members of the company and then by showing that there are no insufficient quorum to convene the meeting. An example of the general meeting convened under court orders was seen in the case of Rison Beredo Limited in 1958, Chancery Division 900. One member was allowed to convene the meeting. And then in the case of Uganda I Dembe Publications Limited in 1975, there were Two shareholders, two of whom were chased from Uganda in 1972, and the third member became the sole director and signatory and used to, con to constitute all the general meetings. And that was all about the introduction to management of a company where we've talked about shareholders and then the meetings through which shareholders manage the company. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends and watch my next video we shall be talking about the conduct, procedure, attendance and quorum of shareholders meetings.